Welcome to Essentials Explained. My name is Luke and in this video we'll be discussing how to understand any Excel file and augment your data set with descriptive lookup columns. We'll cover the index match formula in detail and let's jump right in. Our client is Lee's Paint Company. This is a company that has asked us to do some analysis on their financial performance and root cause analysis on the key drivers within their product categories and customer segments. They've given us a few raw data files, so let's open them up and take a look. So I'm gonna start with a raw data file, and the first thing I wanna do whenever I open up a new file is orient myself to the data. When I look at this file, it's a pretty standard invoice or a transaction level database. And so what that means is each row is gonna be structured as an individual transaction or purchase. So if I look at row four, this is saying that store 76 purchased 171 units of product B at $9 each, resulting in a transaction of over $1,500 on January 3rd, 2020. Great. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a filter. Alt-A-T will add a filter to your data set. And we'll let you look at what's in each one of your columns. And so if I look at the store number, I can see there's maybe 100 store numbers here. There's maybe five or six different products. There are quite a range of different quantities, different prices, uh, different revenue figures, and ultimately all occurring between January of 2020 and August of 2022. Now that we've oriented ourselves to our data, let's add a pivot table to be able to look at it in a more summarized way. And so to add a pivot table, Alt-NVT will add a new pivot table and a new sheet for you. I'm gonna drag my date into my columns, I'm gonna drag my product into my rows, and ultimately my revenue into my value section. And so if I make these formulas a little bit easier to read, what I'm gonna see is looking at my grand total line, it certainly looks like this business is declining precipitously. Unfortunately, looking at this, we can realize that 2022 is a partial year. It only runs through August, where 2021 and 2020 run through December. So we can't compare these apples to apples. Looking within our product groups, we can see maybe there's some trends at the product level. Maybe some of these products, looks like product F is a little bit larger in 2020 and 2022, but hard to read given we don't understand what these products actually represent. If I look at this and maybe let's say we wanna view the customers, I can remove this field, I can add the store number to the rows, Let's say I wanna sort this to make it the largest. I can see that you know maybe store nine is quite a bit bigger than store 75 or store 16, but again, pretty hard to read given we don't know what any of these stores actually represent. What I wanna do is I wanna add a lookup table to be able to understand what each of these anonymized figures actually mean. Going back into our file, if I open up this product lookup table, I can see I have the list of my anonymized product names and product descriptions. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it back into my raw data. I'm just gonna paste this into my raw data tab. I'm gonna auto fit the column widths and then add a lookup table to column G that will give my product description. And so what I want is I want to be able to return the appropriate product description for each anonymized value. So for product, a, I want it to say red paint. Product E, I want it to say blue paint premium. Product B, I want it to say blue paint. So the easiest way to set this up is gonna be with an index match. When I use an index, I want the array of what I want. And so that's gonna be the product description. And then I wanna use a match to find the row number. And so what I wanna match is product A, or the anonymized value, with the anonymized value in my lookup table. And so if I use that with an exact match, I can see this returns red paint. I'm just gonna fill this down so I can take a look. And what I can see is product A returns red paint, product E returns blue paint premium, product B is blue paint, uh, product C is yellow paint. Great, looks like everything's working correctly. I'm just gonna update this color. And let's talk a little bit about these individual formulas and how they work together so we can understand the index match. So the first formula we're gonna talk about is an index. And let's look at the three criteria that Excel gives us. So it asks for an array, a row number, and a column number. The array is the reference range of what you want. It is what you want this cell to return. 
The row number is going to be the row number in your array you would like to return. And then the column number will be the column number in your array you'd like to return. Default is one. And so let's look at one quick example. And so we have a different category of fruits. So apples all the way to grapes. If we were using our index formula, first we want to select our array of what we want. So our index C3 through C9, our row number, which is number two, and that will give us the output of bananas. If we look at one more example, we again select the reference range of what we want, which is our fruit category. And then we select the row number we want, which is row number six. And that gives us the output of figs. Pretty simple. And so if we move on to our match formula, which is the second part of the index match, you have three component pieces as well. A lookup value, a lookup array, and a match type. And so your lookup value is going to be the reference of what you were looking for. So it's going to be the criteria you're looking for. Your lookup array will be the array of cells to check to see what matches your lookup value. And then the match type will be the, the type of match. So this can be negative one, zero, one. Would almost always use zero here. It is giving you an exact match, which is what you want for an index match. So let's look at one quick example here as well. Same format with the fruit categories. And so this time we're gonna do a match on cherries. Our first value is gonna be our lookup value, which is cherries. And then we're gonna put our array of cells to check, which is C3 through C9. If I put that in, it gives me an output of three, which is the third row where cherries is. If I look at one other example, what we wanna do is we wanna match for grapes. We type in the value of grapes. We type in the array we would like to check, which is C3 through C9, and it gives us the output of seven, as grapes is in the seventh row of the array. So putting this all together, we get an index match. And so when we look at this index match, it has two same components. So let's start with the index. And so the index will have the array, which is the reference range of what you want to return, right? So the value you want in your cell. And then the second part, the match is finding the row number. So we wanna be able to find the right row number for our desired output. As we talked about within the match, there are three component pieces. There is a lookup value, which is the reference of what you were looking for the lookup array of the array of cells to check, and then the match type. And so let's look at one example of how these work together. In this scenario, we're trying to understand who is the manager of different product categories. Steve is the manager of apples, Danielle is the manager of bananas, Steve is the manager of dates, etc. So what I'm gonna do is use an index match. For my index, the first thing I wanna select is what I want, which is the manager. So I'm gonna select array D3 through D9. Then I'm gonna use my match to find what row number. I'm gonna use my lookup value, which is bananas, my lookup array, which is C3 through C9, and then an exact match, which gives me Danielle. So let's walk through the process of how we're gonna do this. We have our raw data table, and all we're really gonna do is append a lookup column on the right-hand side of our data. This can either be a lookup with an index match or some kind of other calculated field. Maybe you want to multiply something by a thousand or build in a date column. There's a number of different columns you might want to add to the right hand side of your data to augment your existing data set with necessary lookup columns or calculated fields. Important thing to understand here is keep your raw data and your lookup columns separate. So raw data, always be on the left, keep your lookup columns always on the right. Very important for updating your data. We will get to this again later in the course. Last thing, if you have any kind of coding experience or if you SQL, you may understand this is a left join. So we start with our left table, which is our raw data, and we join our right to the left table. Important thing to understand here if you're not familiar with this concept is in our left table, we're gonna keep even unmatched rows, right? So let's assume this is not the case in our data set, but if we had product X, Y, or Z that didn't exist in our lookup file in our right table, we still wanna keep those rows, right? We'll need to do something with them and we'll need to figure out exactly how we wanna treat them, but we don't wanna remove those from our raw data set just because they don't join with the right table. And again, on the right table, we're actually not going to include any unmatched rows. So, so let's assume in our lookup table we had orange or pink paint. Again, we don't have those, but let's use our imagination here. We actually wouldn't include those in the join and they wouldn't make it to the left table because we don't really care about those and they would be unnecessary for us 
to perform our analysis. If you are less familiar with the join concept, I would not stress about this point. This is an example if you have a background and understand this concept to think about how an index match works in other applications. But again, would not stress about this point if you don't perfectly understand what a left join is. If you're interested in more examples of an index match and learning best practices for implementing them in your Excel file, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained and please comment any questions or feedback you have below.